Um, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for that reminder. Uh, what was I saying? Eugene, what was I saying? I can't remember anymore. If you're saying something, you're muted, but I can't hear you. You were describing something that would be permanent, I think. Um, okay, so uh, permanent, da, 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 yes. Um, whenever you open up a new shell, there's uh, essentially some setup that happens to sort of prepare that environment. Um, and if you use bash, it's usually one of these files, either a, a bash profile or, or a bash RC. Um, uh, so you can check uh, on your uh, on your machine uh, which uh, of these that you have. You might use a different shell, so you might have um, uh, you might be using uh, a, a Z shell, uh, which I use, um, that has um, a bunch of configuration here. What this says is it helps set up uh, your environment. It does <clears throat> a bunch of export statements and a bunch of other things to help prepare this shell. Um, so if you want to have something a little bit more permanent, you can add a key value pair to your environment because this file always runs before you before the shell opens uh, for you. So whenever you open up a new shell, uh, all of those uh, setup files get, get run. All right. So at the moment, I've got nothing in my environment for uh, the, the environment variables that I've set. If I add it uh, to one of these setup files, it will be there for always. But the problem with this approach is that you're essentially always adding um, uh, uh, environment variables that you might not always want. Um, so, so we have two options at the super temporary, just in the shell, or always existing, essentially in perpetuity until you change some of these configuration files. And there is a middle ground uh, that we can choose, which is to um, use um, uh, uh, essentially project specific environment variables. And this is the approach that's being taken here, which is quite a common approach that you'll see, um, where you have um, a file usually uh, called .env, uh, and conventionally named this, uh, because it should be a signal to anyone who reads this, that this is an environment variable file. Um, and you list all your environment variables uh, like I have here. Um, and then you have a, a program, or you can do it yourself, but usually people use a program to uh, read this file, add it to your environment uh, whenever, you're, whenever you run your project. So it's just temporary uh, for your project. And so this gives you a way to add key value pairs to your environment, but yet not uh, persistent whenever your project's not running. And you don't want to keep adding loads and loads of key value pairs to your environment because otherwise it would just get huge. And you might end up start, start having some clashes. So uh, I'm using a .n file here, and uh, I'm using uh, this node package called dot n, uh, spelled literally rather than with a dot, uh, to manage that process of reading that file, adding it to the environment, and that's sort of set. All right, so this is the middle ground. Um, I don't need to worry about it once I have everything in this file, uh, but then they, they're not there after my project. All right. So this is, again, a way to add variables to environment. This is not in version control, this file, all right? Um, uh, you don't commit this to, to, to GitHub, so always make sure it's in your, in your .gitignore. Um, and you should provide instructions for people to make sure they, uh, when they, if they install your own project, uh, that they add uh, their, their, their data to this file. So I've given an example of a file which is in version control, but has no information to say what should it look like. So if you go to GitHub uh, on this example here, you don't, you, you don't see the .m file, but you see the example. So here's where you would add the information to make this work. As a result, none of your personal information is in version control and therefore not in GitHub. All, uh, all there is, is the, the, the variable itself, all right, using uh, your node environment. So this is expecting that someone has set up their environment to have a variable called Twitter US number or personal number. Does that make sense? Um, that dot it require dot m thing. Does that care where your um, dot n file is? It should be in the project root. So it should be at this level rather than anywhere else. And that's the only place it will read it. 
uh, unless you specify. You, I'm sure there's a way to configure it that you can send it a specific file. OK, thanks. Yeah. How do you get ignore? Is it just literally require then where, wherever it is, basically? Uh, yes, it will be from this uh, route, um, from this working directory, and say like where the path to the file or path to the folder. So this is the file folder and this is the file. You just add it in, in, in essentially new lines. And always make sure you add your gig ignore first before you commit it. All right. Sometimes it gets a little bit difficult if you've already committed the thing you want to get ignore, because then you've got to uh, delete it, add it to get it. It's a bit tricky. If you get into that situation, let me know. Okay. So we've been talking about environment variables um, because this is something that I want you to, to do uh, in, in a few minutes is to make sure uh, you can run this code. Um, and by doing, by being able to run it, you should, you should all have your Twilio account details. And all you should need to do is add your uh, information to uh, create a .n file, um, add your information here, and then uh, run this file. If you do that, it should work. All right. Uh, we're not finished just yet. Uh, Eugene, you still got your hand raised, so I might come back to you for a question, even if you don't have a question. Nice. Um, okay, so first step is add your Twilio auth information to .m file and then run uh, the file to send a message to your phone. So it's something you've already done, but this is now using um, a program to do this. Um, uh, that has a, a slightly a uh, little bit more uh, logic involved. We're not going to worry about the logic. It's just a, it's a very simple um, uh, a bit of code that sums up some item prices um, and then sends you a message saying your total is and then the amount. All right, that's the only additional bit of logic. Um, uh, so I want you to run uh, run this code and get it to work. So you should see a text message from uh, uh, from your Twilio number uh, to yourself uh, with the message uh, your total is and then an amount. So that's that's the that's the next stage of part two. After you've done this, this is the point, and um, uh, uh, we need to be able to test this behavior. So at the moment, um, if I were to run my uh, shop spec which goes through the same process and it sends me a message. I don't want this to actually send me a message. Currently, it does. And this is not a good thing in a test. I don't want to actually, uh, whenever I run my test, send myself a text message. So we have to find a way to test this behavior, uh, but not have it actually run uh, 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 the uh, uh, run the, the, the Twilio um, uh, API function that then sends me a message. So I have to find a way to, uh, to override it. So the way we're going to do it um, uh, is to use a Jasmine spy to spy on the create method, and then to, to use a Jasmine matcher to have been called with to assert that the argument past the create method is the correct one. So if we think about this, what we're trying to say is, um, I'm not, I don't care about what the Twilio API does. All I want to do is I'm sending it the right information. So if you have a look at the message, all I want to say is I'm sending it the right information. This is the information I'm sending my create method. I don't care about, uh, this is all external code, client messages.create. This all comes from the node, node Twilio API. This is not what I'm testing. What I'm testing is I'm using it in the right way. So I want to set up an expectation to say, I call the create method with these argument, with this argument. So that's what I want you to, 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 uh, to do. By doing this, by setting up your Jasmine spy, you will override the create method and you won't actually send the text message, but we can still assert that we're sending it with this argument. And that's important because we're saying, I wanna use it in the right way, but it, the API itself is tested. I don't need to worry about what it sends back to me. I just want to make sure I'm using it in the correct way. And this is how we're going to be testing third party uh, code like this. All right. So um, 
first step is make sure you can run uh, this file uh, and get to send yourself a message again. Then run the spec. When you run the spec, it should again send you a message. And we're going to try and find a way to make sure we don't send that message and assert on the right thing, which is that we're sending the right data to Twilio. Um, so that's the work that I want everyone uh, uh, to do. There is a, a solution up here if you want to, to have a look at it, but try it and look up the document. The, you try and use the information here in the resources uh, uh, to think about how we can do this. All right. Okay, questions before you all go on your merry ways again? I've got a question. Uh, this part might sound a bit stupid, but are we meant to be using your directory or uh, create? You're all frozen. What's just happened? Hello? Hello? Sorry, I think your internet went for a second. I think my internet, so something happened to, to anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, are we meant to be using the directory we've just made, or are we meant to be using this one that, that you put on, on GitHub, on GitHub to, uh, to do what you just said? Uh, this directory. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, folks, uh, any other questions? Does everyone feel like they, they know what we're gonna be doing for the next little while? Cool. Any questions, keep posting in the channel and, and we can answer them, all right? Okie doke.